believe what we're just saying, and in time we can still we can rap. So you have young people who are going about their own business, and this is some of the things that they're going to encounter. If they have not been being trained, and they, they do not know why they believe what they believe, God forbid that we might do some of our young people. So the, the, the sons of the prophets, they respected Elisha, because not only did he profess to be a man of God, but he had that lifestyle that also testified to it. And even though he was strict when he needed, when time for him to be strict, when it was time for it, they still wanted to be where Elisha was. Matthew Henry says that he was a man of great condescension and compassion. He went with the sons of the prophets into the woods when they desired his company. Let no man, especially no minister, think himself too great to stoop to do good, but be tender to all. Oh yeah. This was Elisha. He knew that he had the power of God, but he was willing to come down to the level of the young people and to be where they were. And then my third and final point. This is the, the meat of the message. The first point, the first point was showing to us that wherever God is, there is growth. The second point, we don't need to compromise to win the young people. Mm. And the third point, your iron can swim. Mm. Your iron can swim. Let's flesh this out. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 5 to 7. The word of God says, speaking about when Elijah went up into heaven. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. Verse 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. Before Elijah was taken up into heaven, he took up his mantle, struck the waters, and the waters were parted. Elisha made one request of Elijah. When you go to heaven, give me not the same amount, but give me a double portion of your spirit. Amen. That relationship that you have with God, I want to be twice as close to him as you are. And so he received that. And the very river where they crossed over when Elijah went up was the very river that they were by as they were cutting down the, the pieces of wood to make the, 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 to make the building. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 5 to 7 now says, But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick, and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand, and took it. Do we have any young people who love physics? Mm -hmm. Love chemistry? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it myself. <laughs> but, I still have to say this. Iron does not quote unquote swim. When you look at the word swim in the, in the Hebrew, it means float. The iron did float. You are on a ship, you want the ship to stop, you cast over the iron anchor so that the ship can come to a standstill. Iron does not float. But I want to teach us the lesson that the Word of God has. When we deal with Jesus, there are no restrictions to what He's able to do. Oh yes, I like that, yes. Amen. And young people, wherever you find yourself in life right now, your iron can float. Mm -hmm. Your iron can swim. Guzik's commentary says that Elijah cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float. 
This was an obvious and a unique miracle. There was no trickery in the way that Elijah put the stick in the water. It was simply an expression of his faith that God honored. Mm. Spurgeon says God can do all things. He can make iron swim. We cannot. And yet you see the prophet did it and he did it by the use of a stick. He cut down a stick. Was there any connection between the stick and the iron? I can't see any. And yet God does use means and he would have us use means. Mm -hmm. What the commentator is saying, God could have simply brought the, the iron up. Yeah. But he taught us a lesson. He wanted Elijah to use what he had there. Mm -hmm. Elijah cut down the stick and threw it in. God did the rest. Mm -hmm. Young people, one of the hardest things to do can be trying to study this. Mm -hmm. You will have as much energy all day. But the moment you settle down and open this up, all of a sudden, you, who've been having insomnia the whole week, fall straight asleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've been trying to understand this. And as you read it, it seems like it's Spanish, Hebrew, or Greek. But, thank God, someone said Chinese. Thank God, your iron can swim. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I shared my testimony before I struggled with sin, a particular addiction for seven old years. Introduced to it by a group of friends at the Bahamas Academy. They my weren't God. Christians. My they God. weren't Christians. Let me, let me insert that. Let me insert that. They weren't, they weren't Adventists. But I placed myself in their company and I got addicted to a certain sinful behavior. Seven whole years, I wanted to break it, I didn't have the power. But thank God for God, the influences. Someone challenged me to read the Word of God. My father challenged me, try and read it from Genesis to Revelation. Take one year and try and finish it in a year. Seven years I struggled with that thing. I had no power to break it. But with God, your iron can swim. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Started to read the Word of God. I would come home from COB. Mommy and Daddy go to they went to sleep about 10 o'clock. The house was in total peace after about 10 p.m. Just me. My Bible and my Jesus. Yeah. Started to read the Word of God and I started to learn stories. I never heard preachers preach about these things. I said, man, this is in the Bible? Yeah. I started to see God speak to me on a personal level. Yeah. I started to see things happening in my life. Prayers started to be, to be answered in seconds sometimes. Mm -hmm. And as I started to read the Bible in January, by the time of the middle of that year, I used to have a calendar. God told me, you want to get rid of the sin? Every time you fall into it, put an X on the calendar. Come to me and confess your sin. Get back up and try to do better. As I did that, I would look at the calendar. Sometimes it would be one X in a week. Sometimes it would be two. As I looked and looked, eventually the day came. Looked at that calendar. No Xs. A sin that I struggled with for seven whole years. The power of God broke it in less than 12 months. Mm -hmm. Your iron can swim. Oh, yeah. Might be a young person here right now, slave to sexual addiction, slave to sexual sin. You just can't say no when your body starts to respond in a certain way. Can I remind you that the God who made the ox head float is the same God who can make your iron swim? Solid word, brother. You may feel like you are weighed down by the burden of sin. It is just too heavy. But the Jesus of Elisha can make your iron swim. Mm -hmm. Conceivably, God could have arranged a way for the ox head to appear right in the man's hand without any effort on his part. But this miracle worked in a familiar way. God did the part only he could do. But he left to man the part that he could do. Mm -hmm. Came and realized that God will never wake me up. Open up the Bible. Open up my eyes. And place the word of God in front of me. God won't do that. I have to do that. What God will do is when I open it, he will give me the understanding to understand how this applies to my life. Oh, yeah. Might be a young person here, just as I was. Immersed in the entertainment of Hollywood. And if you took some time to prayerfully research what some of these individuals believe, you would not give them access to your minds. The Lord is using many of these celebrities, whether willingly or ignorantly, 
to prepare a world for the greatest deception that has ever faced. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians says that working all great deceivableness and unrighteousness, that wicked shall appear. Mm -hmm. Satan will impersonate Christ. And many who have been filling their minds with the lies coming in through the streams of entertainment and Hollywood will fall in to that deception. And brothers and sisters, we ought to be praying for those in the Oh, church. yes. We ought to be showing them the right way. But I'm speaking as a young man who used to fall asleep, who is go, who is go home on a Saturday night, and from sunset straight up until 3 o'clock the next morning, I'm watching one movie after the next. I was into it. But once the Word of God says in the Psalms, it says that the entrance of thy word bringeth light. Mm -hmm. Once the word came in, automatically I could detect that there's something up with this stuff that I'm watching. Young persons, you might be struggling with it just as I was. Your iron can swim. Your oh, yeah. iron can float. As I bring it home, Elijah then caused the submerged axe head to, to surface and instructed the pupil to receive the axe so that he would personally participate in the miracle. Mm -hmm. Leaders, we have to allow young people to participate mm -hmm. in the work of God. Oh, yes. Let them get a taste of oh, the yes. sweetness of serving God. That's right. Elisha could have said, let the stick go in there and let the axe come straight to me and let me pick it up. But he said, no, you go and pick it up. Mm -hmm. He worked along with the young man mm -hmm. to train the young man into things of God. Oh, yes. Elijah was a man of great power. He could make iron to swim contrary to its nature. Because the God of nature is not tied up to its laws. No laws when we're dealing with God. You might be struggling in school all your life. You've never been able to understand physics. The word of God says, because I've made your testimonies my meditation, you'll make me wiser than my teachers. Mm -hmm. God can open our minds to be to excel in our schoolwork. Mm -hmm. Your iron can swim. Definitely can. God's grace can thus raise the stony heart which has sunk into the mud of this world and raise up affections naturally earthly to things above. There's a young person here today who simply wants to know Jesus. Oh, yes. Yeah. Young person here today who wonders, I mean, after all that I have done, can I possibly mm -hmm. be the Christian that God has called me to be? I've went too far. But I thank God that the iron did swim. The Word of God says that Jesus became sin for us. The one who did not sin even once in his life. 33 years, not even in his thoughts, did Jesus sin. And he didn't do it by tapping into his divinity. But he did it the same way that you and I can go to our Father and ask for that strength. Mm -hmm. 33 years, didn't even so much as steal a cookie out of the cookie jar. Mm. Didn't so much as tell a little white lie to his mother. 33 years, the spotless Lamb of God lived a perfect life. Yes, Went on Calvary's cross. Why? So that that young person at New Providence who was struggling can say, Jesus, I want to accept your life. Mm -hmm. I want what you did to cover my wrongs. And I want you to empower me to live the life that you have lived. As the piano softly plays, nothing between my soul and, and the Savior. I want to share the true beauty of the iron swimming. You see, it doesn't make sense why a sinner who could have done the most heinous acts the word of God says that the thief on the cross looked at Jesus and he said, remember me when you go into your kingdom. Jesus told that thief, who was also believed to be an accomplice to murder, today I tell you, you are going to be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. How is it that a criminal can be considered sinless? Young people, it's because the iron did swim. Yes. There's a young person right here today feeling that guilt, feeling that shame. And the devil is lying to you and telling you 
that things will never change. But remember this, the iron did swim. Yes. I'm gonna make an appeal. But I wanna, I cannot leave without telling us about the true meaning of repentance. Inside many a Christian church, the lie has been told that we can continue living the same sinful life and expect to make it into heaven. Not so. Whilst the criticizing person behind their back, you will not see heaven. Giving in to willful sin, you will not see heaven. However, the iron did swim. You can be clothed in sin. Jesus is saying, because of what I did, I can take, take away that sinful life. I can call you to myself, and I can clothe you with the righteousness of Christ. I won't look at you and see the wrongs that you have committed. Once you come to me with a desire to live differently, it doesn't make sense. Because of what Jesus did, the iron can swim. Your life can be totally transformed. But repentance requires a desire to change. You cannot feel sorry and think that it stops there. You can feel sorry as much as you want. Judas felt sorry too. But Judas will not be in the kingdom. And so my fellow youth, I speak to you as I speak to myself. If we want to accept the life of Christ, there must be an exchange. We must give Christ our sinfulness. And we must say, Jesus, in return, I want your life of obedience. I cannot say no to this young lady. Every time she calls, I get weak. But I believe that you have the power to help me to say no. You see, once we want to change, God can help us. But if you don't come to Him, we'll forever remain at the bottom of Jordan. Is there someone inside the congregation today who is thankful, overflowing with gratefulness for the oh, fact today, that the iron had is swim? Food for thought. Overflowing with Pastor gratefulness at the fact yes, that that really piece of metal should have remained at the bottom of the God's Jordan. Word. But when Jesus when got no involved, the, the iron the did swim. Some He's of now you making believes, the you know your weaknesses and you know your men. tendencies. But you want you to say, I have I been living like this all my life. But life. I re realize that I don't have to continue this way. Can God change can change me. With an axe God can give me a perfect life. So I pray he can that remove that my sins and give me his perfect righteousness. Wherever you and are help me here in this to walk in to his word. And you want to surrender your life to Jesus? Like that today. Please don't let me take. You want Send to change? Me a note. You believe in the sacrifice of Christ. You want to people wherever you, you are. Accept his life. Leave all things behind. This and walk experience in the life. with Jesus Christ. If you fit into that category, I want to thank want you to ask for spending the time out to listen and allow the word to have impact on your heart. Please do not delay. You realize, forgive your heart. As you are honest with yourself, Jesus I need Jesus. I can't change by myself, but I Happy believe that Sabbath. He can change me. And I'll be if able that's to you, see you, just raise your hand where you are. Not here. Praise God. 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 You've never made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. You realize that time is running out. Christ is coming soon. And you don't want to miss the train to glory. You have never made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. And today you are saying, I want prayers. Because I am preparing to make him my Lord. I am going to make Jesus my Lord and personal Savior. If you have come to church today, Jesus is not your Lord and personal Savior, but you want prayers as you embark on this journey. I want to ask that you raise your hand where you are. You are not a Christian. You have not given your life to Jesus, but you are ready to start that journey. Just raise your hand where you are. Final appeal, and then we pray. I want to invite all the youth leaders tasked with the responsibility of building up the youth here at New Providence Church. 
All of those who say, I want my example to be one that they can walk in. If you fit in that category, I'm going to ask that you come to the front as I say a special prayer for the youth leaders. You are placed in a position of leadership over the young people at New Providence. And today you want to place yourself once more on God's hand. Lord, help me to be the example that these young people need. Help me to encourage them. All of your leaders, come down there. If that is you, I'm going to ask that you come to the front. Get up, people. And lastly, I'm going to ask for all of the youth at New Providence Church to stand. As we say a special prayer. Asking God to help us to remember. No matter where we are coming from, no matter what we struggle with. Whatever our iron is, God can make it to flow. God can make it to swim. As we pray, if somebody is here today who have not made Jesus your own personal Savior, please do not leave without speaking to someone so that we can help you on that journey. Let's bow our heads. Let us pray where we are. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory. But we thank you that Jesus lived a perfect life. Yes. And he is willing to trade our life of sin for his life of righteousness. Father, I want you to take my sinful nature away. I want you to give me the power of God to walk in obedience to your word. And I do not stand alone, dear Father, but there are youth leaders here who are also praying the same thing. Satan sometimes lies and says, there is no way that you will ever change. I pray that some young person will remind him, hey Satan, remember, the iron did swim. Although I am a sinner, Jesus is able to transform a sinner like me. I pray, dear Lord, for the youth leaders of New Providence that you will Continue to strengthen them. Make them examples, Lord. May their lifestyle, may their ministry encourage young people to go all the way with Jesus. As the school of the prophets was overflowing, even so, what may this youth department grow and grow to where they don't have enough room for all the young people who are coming to know Jesus. Lord, be with everyone who is standing, all of the youth. You know our various challenges. No matter what we are going through, help us to remember that the iron did swim. I cannot see how this is going to work out, but it's not my business to worry about. Jesus made the iron flow to the top of the Jordan River. He can turn around my situation. Yes. Be with the members of the New Providence Seventh-day Adventist Church. Continue to bless us and continue, Lord, to keep us as we look forward to your second coming. Is our prayer in Jesus' name that God's name. Amen. 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 You may be seated.